Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to My Expanded Universe, a show where I go through the entire EU in chronological order as best I know how. Oh, you've been waiting for this one, right? I know a lot of people have. It is Truce at Bakura by Kathy Tires. Now, this is the book came out during the Bantam era. It was one of the early books that came out shortly after the Throne trilogy. They said, hey, let's make some more books. And so they brought in Kathy Tires, who I think is a fantastic author, one of my favorites. And they said, hey, why don't you make a story about something that happened right after Jedi? In fact, right after Return of the Jedi, does this story take place? It takes place as Luke wakes up the next morning and is hurting from the electrical shocks that the Emperor gave him the night before, the day before. He's still kind of burning. He's still kind of sore from those. And it's interesting because right off the bat, when you're reading the very first chapter, you're going, wow, yeah, it feels like Star Wars. Anyway, let me digress and get back to what this story is all about. You see, the Rebellion has intercepted a communication from the Empire asking the Empire for help. See, they don't know that the Death Star has been blown up and that the Empire is in shambles right now. And in the meanwhile, they're at Bakura, and they are dealing with a really big issue. There are this alien species called the Sisarook, who are getting very aggressive, and they need backup, or the Imperial Post will be destroyed. So the Rebellion gets this signal, and they say, what should we do? Let them die? You know, that's an option there. And then I thought, well, you know what? We're starting a new world right now, a new galaxy. We just knocked off the Emperor. We just cut off the head, and now the Empire's scampering everywhere. There are warlords trying to carve up territory. Everyone's infighting right now. So we could just run roughshod over the Empire, or why don't we go help these guys, extend the olive branch, and then maybe find a way to have peace and coexist and live together. Maybe they can help strike up, strike up a new government. It goes in line with what the rebellion feels like, right? Negotiation is what they stand for. They want peace, not war. And so they think maybe this is a good time to put our best foot forward. Now, I agree with the other people at the table that says, let them die. But, you know, after all the killing they did, after so much evil, but, of course, good triumphs over Matt, and they decide to go out there and go to Bakora anyway. Now, when they go there, they meet the uh, Imperial uh, captain there. Uh, P it's Peter, I think. P-T-E-R. Thanus. Uh, had to go check real quick. Anyway, uh, they meet him. He is very skeptical. First off, he thinks the Rebellion's lying that the Empire is still around, then later on he's like, well, I don't have any, you know, finds out the truth and says, well, I guess you're the only help we're going to get, because it's either that or get destroyed by the Cicerook. Now, at the same time, there's a senator on the planet Bakura whose name is Gabriel Capsison, and Luke's kind of like, ooh, hello, lady, and she's like, hello, you, and then she finds out that Luke's a Jedi, and she goes, Hush. she is not like Jedi. Jedi are not good in her book, and uh, there's a backstory there I won't ruin, but... Uh, so, Gabriel and Luke maybe have this thing, but then they, they don't, you know. Kathy Tires is good to say, okay, well, I'm not going to be so bold as to say this is who Luke's with, because obviously this takes place before the Thrawn trilogy, and he's not with anyone. So, I can't put him with this girl. So, she has a reason, and it makes sense, you know, why she's not with Luke. Anyway, let's talk about the Cicerook. The Cicerook are an alien species who are very evil. And they look like velociraptors a little bit. And they have these, and it's really weird. I didn't even understand how it looked like until I saw the um, uh, West End Game stuff and the... Um, uh, guide to characters and stuff like that. I don't know who made those. But only then did I get to see and fully envision what they look like because before then, I knew they kind of looked like Velociraptors. I thought they were like Dinosaur Man, which I thought was cool. And then when I saw some actual art from it, I was like, oh, okay, that looks kind of neat. And then they had these paddles. I never understood what they were, but they do look like ping pong battles with a little circle in the middle. And basically, it takes your essence and puts it into a computer. And basically, you're powering up all their ships and everything. And it's, I can't remember exactly what they call the process, but the Cicerook are good at that, which makes them really scary, right? They can take your essence and put it into a computer, and they can punch the buttons, and you have to do what they say. It's awful. And Jedi make great essence. In fact, they have a, a kid called Dev who is Force-sensitive, and he's doing their bidding, and he's kind of like their slave. So, of course, there's that. Luke has to save him. 
Obviously, Dev can't make it out of this adventure because, again, we already have Timothy Zahn's trilogy where we know Luke is still saying, man, I'm the last of the Jedi. Well, obviously you're not. You found this kid, Dev. Oh, wait. Now, long story short, there eventually is a truce to defeat the Cicerook and save the day. Now, I'm not going to say there may be some, uh, a few uh, betrayals along the way, and it's a little bit sketch their, their agreement, their truce, so to speak, at Bakora. But uh, it's actually a really good novel. Now, for the years, I did not read the title, and I used to call it uh, Truce at Baruka. I, I, I just didn't look at the title right, and I kept calling it Baruka. And I remember the first time, I was one of the, um, it was a long time ago, I went to a Comic Con, I believe, one of my first Comic Cons, and I said, Oh, yeah, I've read, do you like Truce of B Baruka? He said, Bakora. And I went, Nah, I think it's Baruka. He went, no, it's Bakora. I was like, mm, okay. And then I went home to make sure and like, you know, brag that I was right. And I was wrong. And so I had to repronounce uh, that word. And it took me a long time. But now Bakora, I can say easily. And it doesn't, I don't even say Baruka anymore. But I used to way back in the day. Uh, but anyway, Bakora is a good novel. Like I said, I love Kathy Tires. I love what she did to this. Um, she only got to write two novels. Both of them I thought were great. And she wrote a lot of short stories, which I enjoyed as well. But uh, like I said, Truce at Bakora feels like a Star Wars movie. It feels like the essence of Star Wars. All the characters feel w real. The situation is real. A lot of people ask me, Matt, what, where should I start in the EU? Well, I always suggest Timothy Zahn's trilogy because I think it's really good. It'll suck people in. If someone were to say, Matt, should I start with Truce of Bakora? I'd be like, yeah, I think that's a good place to start. I like that as a starting place, too, because, again, it takes place right after Jedi, and it does feel like a story. It doesn't use the Empire as the villain. The Empire is there, but a new alien is the villain, kind of, can you know, getting away from the norm. We've already dealt with the Empire, and we're going to deal with the Empire and a lot of other uh, books and comics later on, but for right now, we're going to have an outside threat, this this alien species coming out, com coming out from the uh, cluster or something, wherever they were coming out of, and slowly trying to take over planets. And, of course, they nipped that in the bud immediately and sent those Ciceruca running, which we don't hear from them until a long time later, which is kind of a story of it in and of itself. Uh, I should also mention that the Truce of Bakura source book does an excellent job tying in the Bantam novels with what happened in the comic books, the Marvel comic book series. Now, again, I never got these uh, source books until... Oh gosh, years later. It was right before or right after Disney had bought Star Wars. It was when I was collecting all the West End game stuff. I mean, I got that. I had a few things. I had the Adventure Journals. I had a few other things, but I was slowly getting things piece by piece, but I wasn't going big into the Galaxy Guides and stuff like that until toward the end. And I remember I found, when I read them, I was like, oh, whoa, look out. They're, they were connecting the Marvel comic storyline with the books this whole time. I never even knew it. Uh, what I'm ex uh, trying to explain to you here is there is in the source book, well, in the comic books that we haven't talked about, where they give the alliance, the rebellion gets a new name. Well, that name is not used in the Bantam Era books. And you're like, uh-oh, contradiction. If you're reading the Marvel comic books, you're like, well, why aren't they using the name they suggested in the comic book for the books. It's a different, you know, they're coming up with the Alliance or the New Republic is what it would be. Well, wasn't the New Republic in the comic book? What happened? Well, the source book explains to you what happened. Shortly after they named their new Alliance, they said, hmm, let's call it something different. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen name changes for a new council, a new Galactic Alliance. Later on in New Joe Order, they go through another round of, this is the new name, and that name doesn't last at all, and they give it a, a different name right after that. So they kind of massage that name out after a while. Um, and it makes sense to me. So it's really neat. Did the source book have to do that? No. But just the fact that it did is just awesome. Another reason why I love the Expanded Universe so much. All right, folks, that is all the time I have for now. See you next time with another video.